Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to make the trees shown in the preceding pictures. It's an example of these trees right here. Let's get kind of a uh, realistic leaf appearance. It's worth mentioning that these are very fragile and they don't tend to hold up quite as well in a gaming environment where you're using them a lot and moving them around. Uh, it's just, these are better for display. If you must use them for gaming, it's best that you don't, you know, just keep touching them and moving them around to a minimum. So the materials that you'll need to make this are laid out here. You got uh, the main structure is a balsa dowel. You can buy these from craft stores in a lot longer lengths. So I've cut this one down. You can cut them down to several different heights to suit the uh, height of tree that you're wanting to make. The uh, bark is going to be made from Durham's water putty. You can find this at any major hardware store in the U.S. I'm not sure about uh, international availability, but anything that uh, is similar to this, it's mixed water with it, it becomes hard, it does not shrink. Um, it has a very short work time. Um, painting the trunk, we got some cheap art store paints. They don't need to be very expensive. You don't need to use uh, actual hobby paints for that. The leaves are going to be made from this plastic uh, leaf material. You can find this at florist shops or on Christmas decorations. We got a hobby knife, a fork, cheap paint brushes, a push pin, which is an alternative to this drill. Blended turf. I use this uh, green blend from Woodland Scenics because it produces a nice effect, like mixed um, colors of pine needles. Got a little cheap drill, scissors, cup, and glue gun. So the first step to making these trees is to take your balsa dowel and sand it down using a belt sander. Now, if you don't have a belt sander, you can use a hobby knife to get it into a point, kind of like, uh, let's take this and do that. Obviously be very careful when you're doing this. Belt sander is the way to go, but uh, you know, you can use sandpaper. Just get it into a point, because you're gonna want it to look like this. Kind of like a, uh, it comes to a point like a tree. Okay, so now that we got our uh, shiv here, let's sand it down into a point. We're gonna add some texture, and this is gonna be mainly the texture that you don't see, so it's gonna be less of a uh, complex effect than what we're gonna do next. But this is, this is why you wanna get balsa. I think this here is base wood, so it's a little tougher than what we would probably want. But you take this fork and you just go to town making some texture. I do this toward the top of the tree because the bottom of the tree where there's no pine branches, we're going to use the water putty to make thick bark. Be careful near the top because you don't want the stick to break. You can also get your hobby knife in there, use the back of it. It's, a, I guess, somewhat safer and it also uh, creates impressions in the wood. Now, you can do this to the bottom of the tree too. Uh, the, using the water putty for the bark is actually optional. I just decided to do that for added realism. So that's gonna be our next step. Okay, bark time. I'm gonna use this Durham's water putty. Uh, this is not a supplement, once again. Don't mix this into milk because you will die. <laughs> you wanna open this up. This is, uh, it thins out pretty quick, so you want to be very sensitive with the amount of water that you're using. You want a high um, product to water ratio. This is all the water you need. In fact, that might even be too much. So you mix it up. I added a little too much water, so I'm going to add another spoonful of this. This comes in big and small cans. This is a small can. And it's uh, relatively cheap. I think this run you less than $5 US. Yeah. 
mix this up until it is like so. So it, it's fairly viscous and it's you can sculpt it. And just kind of put it over the uh, the tree trunk. But only go up about you know about where the leaves would start on a real tree. You look at uh, reference photos or have a look outside at uh, the trees where you live. It's just kind of there's no science to it. I like this stuff because it is just so versatile as a filler and as uh, something to sculpt with. And it's uh, cheap, readily available, and it dries very quickly. So that's that looks okay. You know, I just kind of dab this stick here to mess it up, make it look like bark. You can even do that as it's drying so that it uh, makes it forms more of uh, like plateaus and ridges. Just to make it look as close to bark as you can. The overall bark wants to go up and down. So just uh, mess it up and blend it into the rest of what you did. Now usually with these trees, when you're gluing them onto a base, um, a tree like this, I could put uh, like a little nail or a paper clip through there and glue it down into an extruded polystyrene, like blue or pink foam base. Otherwise, you can also sculpt roots out of this stuff and kind of build it up around the uh, bottom so that it fans into the ground that uh, these trees don't have the biggest roots in real life. So that's that's probably what you'd want to do. Just you could leave some bare areas like that, like where uh, like an antelope has scratched its horns or something. So now that this is dry, I'm going to take a drill with a small bit. You can even go smaller than this. And we're going to drill holes in random spots starting above the spot where you added the uh, water putty so be careful when using the drill on some of them you can drill through to the other side that uh, reduces the total amount of holes that you'll have to drill it's not too much of a problem if that happens. There are other ways to do this. The drill is the quickest. There are ways to do it with, uh, with a nail or the push pin shown earlier so you can take that and you know do that to make a small hole I found that that it takes too long and the holes aren't very big you can use a nail press a nail in there or lightly tap it with a hammer You want to use the uh, nail or the push pin up toward the top where it gets a lot smaller just so that you don't end up making a mistake like that up where it really counts up on the top. But anyway, 
once you drill a bunch of holes, um, I would recommend drilling the holes before you put, put the paint on because if you drill the holes after, you're going to have to go through and put uh, the dark paint in each hole. This makes it a little more tedious. So once you drill the holes and you paint it, you end up with this. Now, there was really no special way that I painted this. Um, you could play around with different colors, but I used a, uh, a really dark brown craft paint from the art store. And I just dry brushed it with a gray. So it's, it's pretty simple as far as the paint scheme goes. But, well, it doesn't need to be too fancy, and you can add that if you want. Okay. So now that we have our tree trunk ready and the holes drilled and the paint applied, we're going to take our plastic cedar material and we're going to cut off each individual branch. And the bigger branches like these are uh, better for the bottom of the tree. If we're doing a natural pine shape, they tend to get larger as they get to the top of the tree. So I've cut out a few and we're going to use hot glue be careful when using hot glue, it is hot, and put a little bead into each hole and stick the branches in. Just let it dry for a moment. The best thing about hot glue is that it's, it's an instant bond in most cases and you don't have to wait for stuff to dry a whole lot. Of course, that one took a little longer. And just try to get the branches as far into the hole as possible. If you need to add more hot glue, you can do that. Try to avoid the uh, hot glue strings because that uh, can be a problem in later steps, as you will see. This is one of the more tedious steps in the process, but uh, I think that the results are more than worth it. So I've run out of pieces, so I'm going to go ahead and cut some more. Uh, not all of the pieces on these are the best. You want to avoid ones that are uh, like a 3D shape like this and instead opt for branch shapes that are flat like that. Where you uh, look at a normal pine tree and the branches are broad and flat. And always make sure that the direction of the branch goes down so this one goes down and it can kind of curl up on the end but you wouldn't have wanted to glue that one in like that because it would have looked a little odd now they get a red string in there But anyway, essentially we're just going to continue doing this until we've reached up toward the, the top of the tree. The top of the tree at this point gets a little tricky, and it's also the most fragile part of the tree. So there's some special hope that uh, can happen where branches could fall off. 
but uh, I just reapply the hot glue. We cover those areas up with paint anyway after this step. That one just does not want to stay on. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up and I'll be back in a moment. Alright, so now after gluing those in, it only took me about 15 or 20 minutes with the hot glue and then these plastic cedars. One's loose there. Uh, it's time to paint these sticks. So like where the branch meets the tree, that's going to be brown, kind of blending it in. So like... That, just to make it a little hide some of the hot glue just helps to uh, kind of make it look more like they are branches coming out of the tree rather than just green things glued on to the tree. This is driving me crazy. There we go. So I mean, at this point, You don't need to worry about ones you can't reach because if you can't reach it, it's unlikely that you can see it on the model. And when we add the foliage in just a moment, it's um, they're going to get a lot more bushy, so it will probably be a little harder to see any of these details anyway. But it's pretty self-explanatory, so... I thought I'd mention this top piece. I use a very small tip of one of these bigger pieces of plastic foliage, and I cut a little notch into the tip of this so that I can apply a bead of hot glue in that little tip, and then slide the piece in so that it's between the ends of the two pieces of wood at the end. Okay, now for the fun part, which is putting actual needles onto these branches. I'm going to use my uh, foliage here. I got it poured onto an old kitchen tray. It's a good idea to use something like this to catch the excess flock with. Or use a paper funnel to get it back into the can when you're done, because this stuff is kind of pricey for what it is, but it lasts a while if you're smart about it. So... For attaching the needles, this wasn't in the list of materials, but I'm using just a spray glue. I absolutely hate this stuff, but it, it does the job for what we're going to do here. So, I'm going to take my tree and give it, you only need maybe one light spray because this stuff is pretty potent so and hopefully it's only going to catch the uh, foliage we don't want too much of it to get onto the tree trunk and if it does you can just rub it off with your finger but you can even roll it in here just make sure the, you know, the branches are pretty fragile so you don't want them to fall off and have to warm up your glue gun again. And always uh, shake off your excess.
So here we have the finished tree. They actually aren't uh, too difficult to make and don't take as much time as you might think. The hardest part is just gluing all these branches on. But uh, I've seen other trees like this before with model railroads. Um, just uh, usually not with this many individual branches glued on. I plan this to be the first of a four-part series on trees that I'm going to do with these YouTube videos. So uh, by all means, uh, appreciate it if you like, comment, subscribe. The next videos on the trees are probably going to be for more tabletop gaming style trees because these are a little fragile for that, as I mentioned earlier. I'll show you how to make some that are you know, not quite as ultra realistic, but uh, just a simpler tabletop level tree that uh, fits the purpose just fine. I'm going to do pine and I'll do uh, deciduous trees. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.